it's queen of flannel here welcome back to the channel so for today's video i thought i would do a little bit of a demo tips and tricks with the faber castell polychromos pencils i've been using these quite a bit lately in my mythographic books if you haven't been to any of the recent live streams and i've learned a few things along the way as i have uh, played around with these pencils and I thought that I would share them with you. Uh, I feel like they are a, they're a common pencil in the coloring community, but they're also uh, a pencil that I hear, uh, you know, frustrations uh, with. And it seems to be that people either really love them or they really don't love them. So my goal for today is to show you how I use them. Um, we're going to do two different methods and we're going to work in mythographic magical earth, but I wanted to show you an uh, example, two examples of what I have done with them in uh, fairy wonderland. And I toyed around with how I wanted to format this video. And the easiest thing I think is just going to be for me to talk you through my process as I demo it. So this was uh, one of the first mythographic pages that I have done in quite some time. And we did a, we did some of this on a live stream. A lot of it I did uh, off camera. And typically I don't do color pencil backgrounds, but with this one, because it was smaller spaces, I thought that I would, I would attempt it. And I'm really happy with the, uh, the way it came out. And this is all polychromos. Um, and I'm also working on uh, this image. This is a, a whip, again, with uh, polychromos. And, um, yeah, I've got, like, this corner corner left. So since I've been having a lot of fun with these, um, yeah, I thought I would, I would share some tips and tricks with you. So before we get into the, the actual demo... I'm not going to go too super in depth with color selection and color picking, but what I will do is if you are not following uh, Karen over at My Colorful Country Life, she is actually doing a series of um, going through each color family with the Faber Castell polychromos and um, picking uh, co color color blends. So I'm going to tag her in the description. Uh, definitely go check her out because she's put a huge amount of work into that that series and i think that will definitely help you um you know picking your your color combos so let me go ahead and open up the book to the image that we are going to work on today if i can find it i should have bookmarked it so i picked this image because there are a lot of um, similar elements and one of the the ways that I like to use these is, and, and this is the 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 standard, like the, the base way to color with these pencils. Um, it's not the only way, but what I like to do is go through and lay down a base color on my, you know, my similar elements. So... I would go through and I would use my beige red, since this is my, my base color that I have picked, and I would lay down a base coat on all of my flowers that I wanted to, to color with this combination. I find that these pencils are much easier to work with when you work uh, light to dark and you start with a, uh, a base color. Uh, it gives your additional layers something to kind of grip onto um you know as you're as you're working it makes it easier to put your layers down the thing that you want to be mindful of when you're selecting your uh your colors is what you choose as your base color because it is going to kind of alter the tone of the colors that you put on top of it so again, that's where Karen's work that she has put into picking those combos will definitely come in uh, in handy. And I like to use a lot of the uh, the lighter colors. Let me just grab. So 
these just happen to be on my desk for another project. So if I'm working with greens, for example, and I know that I want my top layers to be uh, a little bit darker, I like this. Um, this is May Green 170. I'll often use this as a, a base color under blues and greens. I also use a lot of the uh, the ivory and uh, the the cream for my base colors. And I will always recommend when you're testing your uh, when you're picking your colors to test your combos out on another sheet of paper or a tester page in the back of your book just to make sure that they that they go well together and then they're not going to you know alter each other to something that turns into mud or that you don't like so let me just give you guys this combo and i will also put it in the description below so my base color is going to be uh 132 beige red my light my my light color is going to be rose carmine 124 Then I've also pulled 142 Matter as kind of my midtone. And then my dark is going to be 194 Red Violet. And if I really wanted to get froggy with this, I could pull in, um, let's see if I have it on my desk, uh, 157 Dark Indigo. I use this for shadows quite, uh, quite a bit. But I want to uh, keep this relatively relatively simple and just work with a minimum number of uh, pencils today. So the first method we're going to use is with the uh, the base color, and then the second method I'm going to do a modified dark to light. Now, when we get into that one, it, it's definitely going to be different than if you were working with a wax-based colored pencil. So as I'm doing this, um, if you do not know, the polychromos are a predominantly oil-based pencil. Um, all pencils are wax and oil, but um, some of them are more wax and some of them are more oil. and so. You will commonly hear these referred to as a, let me get us in a little closer here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And this is going to be pretty light until we start building out the colors. Um, but you'll often hear the polys referred to as a layering pencil and wax-based pencils such as the Prismacolors as a blending pencil. And layering is just another form of, of blending. Um, you can use this technique with with a wax base colored pencil and you can also blend oil pencils. You just have to do it um, in in different ways. So like with the Prisma colors, you can you know smoosh them together as um, some in the community like to like to refer to it. Um, but one of the, best ways to get good results with an oil-based pencil is to work in light layers and build your color up which is what we're going to do with this first flower and i'm leaving some of the white of the uh the paper as my highlight you can also if you want a really stark white highlight and you want to try and block it in before you start working with your colors, you can go in with the white pencil and lay down your highlight area. I'm not going to do that because it doesn't render well on camera and it's not typically how I, how I prefer to work. So I have some areas like through here that I've left white. Uh, so next, I'm going to come in with my rose carmine, and this is essentially my my light color out of my my combo. And I'm going to lightly apply this in some of these areas where the artist has given us these kind of um, these detail lines, and around 
the center of the flower where it would be a little bit darker. And you want to have a light hand when you do this. I think that um, especially if you're coming from a wax base colored pencil or you're used to uh, that that style of blender blendering blending, um, it can be difficult to break the habit of wanting to um, to smoosh. And I know that some people tend to have a uh, a heavier hand but the harder you press especially on your early layers with uh with these pencils the more difficult it's going to be to layer layer them out and to blend out any uh harsh edges that you might not want in your finished product and so i know some people uh recommend to hold your pencil a little a little farther back I can't do that for very long it actually hurts and I feel like I don't have as much control over it so it's just one of those things that you kind of got to play around with and find a, a pencil grip that's comfortable for you sometimes on my base layer I, I, I can do it but when I'm starting to work in little um, little spaces like this and I'm trying to, you know, keep finer details. I also struggle with um, some fine tremors in my my hands, so it makes it a little more difficult for me to hold the pencil all the way back. And really, uh, this this step is just it's it's going to be how you how you feel and where you want the color. So. And I'm kind of um, adjusting my my pressure on my pencil in areas where I want it a little lighter and a little darker. So I want it a little darker down here at the edge. So I'm going to press a little harder. And then as I start to feather out, I'm going to lighten up the pressure on the pencil. Now I'm going to come in with just a little bit of the 142 matter in some of these like deeper little crevices here. So you can really take this as uh, far as you you want in terms of your uh, your layers and how you want this to look. So if I wanted this to be a like a very like soft and airy look, which I feel like we're we're kind of in that territory, I might stop layering at this point and go in with. Um, with my burnishing pencil and have this be the end of it. If I wanted it more vibrant, then I'm just going to keep adding layers until I get to the color tone that I want. And so I'm also looking at um, my, my lighting in the direction that I think that I want my light to be coming from. So now I'm going to go back in with the beige red. Again, very light layers. And I'm just going to go back and forth over these edges very lightly just to kind of blend out some of the, the previous two colors. 
again, keeping in mind that I want this to be this area to be a highlight. So I don't want to take the beige red out too far. I actually do this technique with wax base pencils quite a bit um, for different uh, different reasons. So this is a total total segue, but when I'm working on detailed pages, um, I find that getting started is the hardest part, and staring at white uh, white paper is intimidating. So blocking in color helps me to proceed with the uh, with the image. So if I was doing this off camera, I would go through and I would block all of this in with the beige red before I even started on the um, on the midtones and the, the darks and the shadows. It just makes it feel more obtainable. And that's one of the things that uh, people people say with the polychromos is like they do um they do take a long time to finish an image with and you just have to be patient when you start getting to the point where you're like i i just i need to be done and you can feel yourself start to like to press harder on the paper just take a step back and put the image away for a little while I don't think I would use these on like a double page Kirby spread just because I'd probably lose my mind, but I really like them in these mythographic books, especially because of all of the, um, the, uh, fine spaces and they hold the point really well. So I'm going to come back in with the Rose Carmine and just kind of touch this little area up right here and add a little bit more in the center and again light pressure and I'm just bringing a little bit of the rose carmine up in towards where I've got my highlight area And now I'm back in with the beige red. But it's totally doable to finish a page in this book with polychromos. You don't need pony bajillion layers to get a nice uh, result. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with the red violet and just uh, use this in some of these little like crevices down in this area. This is what I would probably refer to as my shadow color. And I might use it, let's see, right here. And the next method I'm going to show you is actually probably a better method for doing um, flowers with a, a lot of like texture on them, but we'll um, we'll do that with the uh, the second the second flower. So. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks so far. I kind of want a soft look to it. Now, at this point, um, two methods that I like to use to do like my final uh, cleanup or or blending is uh, with larger areas, like on a, a background, 
a lot of times I will take an alcohol marker and use it to uh, to blend out my colors. Uh, you have to be really careful with this though. You need to make sure that you've got a decent amount of layers down on your paper before you go in with the alcohol marker uh, or else it's going to make it really difficult to apply any additional uh, pencil over the top. So I usually like to have about five or six layers of pencil on before I attempt to come in with the alcohol marker and you really want to make sure that it uh, that it dries before you um, go back in with your your pencils or you are you're going to damage the paper and then you'll hit a point where you'll notice that if you try and use the alcohol marker your pencil will kind of melt um, almost like you're pushing around paint it's the same thing that happens when you use uh, odorless mineralist odorless mineral spirits so I try and be sparing with this and only use it if I have like a large area that I'm trying to blend um, the other thing that I like to use is this uh, Derwent uh, burnishing pen it came in a pack with a blender um, if you notice um, that the kitty has uh, attacked my burnisher here um, and again, you want to make sure that you're satisfied with how much pigment, how many layers that you have down on the paper before you use this. Um, and I kind of go back and forth, like I'm not going to push super hard with this and completely burnish it. I just use it to smooth some things out, but I don't want to go so far that I'm, you know, um, damaging or you know, completely obliterating the tooth of the paper in case as I'm working through, I decide that I want more layers on top. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do a little bit of this just so you guys can see what, um, what it does. And you also want to make sure that you're mindful of where you, where you're burnishing and how far out you're pulling because you will actually push your colors into each other. So if, um, if you're not mindful of that, like your dark, my dark area right here, I can actually push that out into this little highlight. So I would just swipe it up over the top like this and just use it like over the edge. And this is really just to smooth some areas out. It might not show up very well on um on the camera but and this is a nice way to to finish off your image if you want to keep your layers and your colors light because sometimes you hit a point where it's like you're ready to start blending out but you don't want to use white or black or um, one of your pencils because you don't want to add more color. So this is a nice option. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. So our next flower, we're going to work on this one over here. And on this one, we are going to kind of do a modified dark to light. Um, so this technique is really good if you're working on something that has a lot of texture and you want to keep the texture. Uh, it can be difficult when you get to a certain number of layers to get, uh, to get and keep texture on the top of uh, a bunch of, of pigment. So what we can do is go into the areas where we want the texture and the, um, these dark edges and block that in first. And again, we want to make sure that we are keeping a light pressure because if we don't like it, then we can go in and erase. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of this out into this, uh, this area and this is the red violet. And this is a really good technique uh, to use when you're doing things like fur. 
So if you go in and you put your fur texture in first and then build your other colors up around it, as long as you're mindful of uh, your blending, you'll be able to keep that texture. It would also be good for like this uh, this rock right here. So I would probably go in with my dark gray on a lot of these uh, lines first. So next, I'm going to go in and I'm going to block in my highlights and um, add my base color in, but I'm going to be really careful to start that I don't blend into my textured areas or my, my darker areas. So I'm going to just try and build this color up around them for right now, and you'll see why in a minute. So now I'm going to come in with my, I'm going to sharpen it first, uh, with my Rose Carmine, and I'm going to start very lightly at the, just at the edges of my dark area there. And I'm keeping a light pressure because I don't want to um, flatten out all of that texture. And we will go back in with the darker color um, So again, at this stage, we are doing a lot of color blocking. On our first few layers and then once we're happy with how uh, everything looks then we can start um, putting down some heavier pressure so I'm gonna go lightly over top of those just to match up the the tone, but I'm not going to press hard to blend things out so I can maintain that color separation. So I'm going to go back in with the red violet and get a little deeper in there. And you can already see that it's got a different look to it than the other flower. which is perfectly fine because it's a flower and they all look different in nature anyways so they don't need to look the same
So I'm going to come back in with the Rose Carmine and just bring a little bit of it into that darker area. And just in a few areas where I feel like it needs a little more pop. And now I'm going to come in with um, with uh, the matter. Just down here at the edges. And I am pressing a little harder here. And now I'm going to come in with our beige red and soften up some of these edges right here out into our highlight. And there we go. I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with how that looks. And you can see it definitely has a different look to it since we did the, um, the darker first. I, I don't use this all the time, um, but it, it can be done. I, like I said, prefer it on to, to keep to things where I want some, um, some texture to it otherwise i tend to use the uh the color block with a with a base color and build uh build up so it's two different ways that you can use these pencils i hope that uh, it was helpful i just wanted to do a you know quick little tutorial for you um for this weekend's video and yeah if you have any questions uh Again, this is just the way I do it. It is not the only way to do it. It's really, you just got to play around. Um, and again, check out Karen's channel. Check out her series if you're looking for uh, color combinations. I will link my combination, or I link, I will put my, um, my color combination that I am using in the description below, as well as uh, links to where you can purchase the Polychromos pencils if you were interested. Uh, they come in a variety of sets, and you can also get them open stock, which if you are new to oil-based pencils, I would recommend purchasing a, a few open stock to try them out to see if you like them before you commit to a big giant set. I'll also link to the book. We're working in Mythographic Magical Earth, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer. And it would really mean a lot if you would uh, like, sub, hit the bell to get notified when I post future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.